I'm Jamie Davis with Innovations in Patient Care, and we're here at EMS Today 2012 at the EMS 10 Awards, which is sponsored along with GEMS Magazine by Physio Control. And I am really excited, as always, to get a chance when I have an opportunity to pull Cam Pollock in. And Cam, you're the Vice President of Marketing for Physio Control, but yep. a lot's been going on with Physio over the last few months. Uh, we've a lot's been heard going last on. year about uh, some change, uh, you were going to be going uh, public or uh, get out from under Medtronic and yep. be on your own again, yep. and that's happened. Tell us a little bit that about that. That has happened. Well, uh, I, I was telling you earlier, you know, we've been doing this a long time. Uh, Physio has been involved with EMS since 1955. We just had our 57th anniversary uh, this past month, and uh, so we've had a lot of firsts throughout the years. And we've got a new, a new anniversary, a new special day, our Independence Day, January 30th. We are now an independent company. Mm -hmm. We are no longer part of Medtronic, and Medtronic's been a good parent for us for the last 14 years. But we think we'll be a better fit as a standalone company. We think we'll be closer to our customers. We think we'll be able to move faster. So we're excited about that opportunity. Our new parent is a, a company that you've probably heard of, Bain Capital. They've been in the news a lot lately uh, because of uh, Mitt Romney's association with them. And unfortunately for, for them, uh, they're not used to the spotlight, and, and uh, you know, Mitt's been under attack for his old... Uh, capitalist days as part of uh, um, venture capital and, and uh, private equity. But uh, we're actually really pleased with it. Bain owned us once before. They owned us uh, when we were divested from Eli Lilly back in the 90s. And they owned us for a couple years and then took us public. And that was a very good time for physio control. Uh, I, I was telling someone earlier that two of the most successful projects in physio control history were started while we were owned by Bain before, the LifePak 500 and the LifePak 12. So they'd like to come into a company like ours and say, how can we invest? How can we make this company grow? And that's what they're doing this time as well. They've, they, uh, they had fond memories as well from that last time with us. And they're a very well-respected private equity firm. They're $65 billion in assets. They're one of the top private equity firms in the world. And they've come in and said, how can we help this company grow? How can we take them to the next level? They see a lot of potential in us. And uh, I think they've said, frankly, uh, that the company's been successful dis despite the fact that uh, Medtronic probably hasn't invested as much in Physio as they, as they could have. So they see a lot of upside. And we're excited about it. Uh, you were mentioning when we were walking over here that we seem to have a, more of a, a spring in our step. Absolutely. And we're all very excited about it. A lot of us are, um, have invested our own money in this. We're, we're, we've, we're aligned with their goals. We're excited about the, the possibilities. And uh, you know we're not looking back. Well, it's exciting to see, and I talked talk to Jen Roth, and, and she just said she was so excited the first time she got to send out some information as physio control, mm -hmm. and not have to worry about you know some, some of the oversight that you had with Medtronic. And like you said, Medtronic's a great company, and certainly just because they're in the medical devices business doesn't mean that their business model was the same as yours. Right. And, and you really serve a much different need, and your connection with your core customer, I think is one of the things that, that makes you such a valuable company because uh, you you understand the, the need of EMS and you, you know what we're trying to do out there. We are government agencies and public service organizations right. and it's a little bit different business marketplace. Well, when you look at the companies that serve this market, there's a number of different companies. They all come from different uh, angles and different backgrounds and and we started with EMS. We grew up with EMS. Uh, we, were, we predate the John and Roy days. We were uh, a company that started in Seattle and grew up with Seattle Medic One as, as EMS was really developing in the 60s and 70s. So we've been there all along. When you look at our business and how it's structured, the majority of our business comes from EMS. We are in the hospital as well. It's a great market for us, especially the emergency department. We're in the public access market as well with its ties to EMS. But our core business, our largest chunk of business is EMS. It always has been EMS. It always will be EMS. So that's uh, the part that's near and dear to us. We consider that the rock solid core, and then we build around it. So we're looking to the future and saying, how can we expand what we do? We, we're not a defibrillation company. We've had that conversation before. It's certainly what we're known the best for, but we see ourselves as an emergency medical response company, and there's lots of other parts of the chain of survival with resuscitation. That's why we're getting into mechanical CPR. That's why we're getting into cooling. But even beyond that, there's so many other things that EMS systems do that we think that we can help with, uh, with the expertise that we have, um, with the technology capabilities that we have, whether that's trauma, sepsis, stroke. There's lots of other things that are more common than defibrillation that we think we can help our customers with over time. So you'll be seeing a lot more coming from, from Physio in those areas. And we have more innovation in our pipeline right now than we ever had in the whole history of the company. And, and I think it's, gonna, it's only going to go up from here. 
Well, there's so many opportunities. I think you, know, you look at how the back of an ambulance has changed over the last 20 to 30 mm -hmm. years. Uh, you know, and you can look at the changes in our, the heart monitors uh, from right. the LifePak 5 to the 10s right. to the 12s. And they've really become uh, much akin to that hospital monitoring station that the nurses are familiar with at every bedside right. with multiple parameters of patient systems being monitored. Right. And those, it's exciting for me to see those systems being transitioned and, and becoming evident in the, the EMS setting. And I know that your products are really leading the way in giving us more insights into what's going on with our patients. Yeah, well a lot of people talk about the LifePak 5 uh, and it's certainly a product that built the company and it was a, such a huge leap from the products before it. But a lot of people with their fond memories of the 5 forget that the 5 had a very small monitor that, and it really was limited in what it could do. And it was a great monitor at the time and really um, I won't take anything away from it but companies can't rest on, on what we've done in the past. We have to keep moving forward. And, and today we see the LifePak 15 um, especially the 15 in combination with LifeNet and CodeStat is really, we call it the center of clinical care. That that monitor is the center of everything that happens clinically in the back of an ambulance or at the scene uh, for an ALS crew. So our thoughts are how can we help uh, make them better? How can we help make the crew better? How can we help uh, improve patient care? Uh, with that monitor being the center of everything that's going on, what else can we bring? What other capabilities can we bring? How can we make their jobs easier? Uh, Lucas is really a prime example where uh, the innovation didn't come from inside Physio Control. We had a, a long-standing working relationship with the Swedish company, YoLife. And when we had the opportunity to purchase them, we, we decided that we couldn't pass it up. It was, it was too good of a product and too good of a group of people that we wanted to make them part, officially part of Physio Control. And this happened about a year ago, and we talked about it mm -hmm. back then. And since then, we've been really happy with the results. Uh, mechanical CPR is really starting to move. We, we have, uh, it's our fastest growing product and we've about doubled what we were doing at the same time last year, about doubled. And even without that definitive clinical evidence that says mechanical CPR will save more lives in the end, which people keep asking for. And, and I think the reason that it's growing despite not having that huge study it would take to get that is that it's got so many other benefits. And what we see happening and people who are using the product tell us that it's safer and they tell us that it changes the way code's managed. That when you've got someone on, on a mechanical CPR device, that it slows things down, it, it takes away the chaos, and now all of a sudden, when you had to have six people lined up to do CPR, now you've got one machine and it's Lucas doing it, and everything else uh, can unfold at a, at a more natural pace. And we've seen, we've seen results, we've had people come to talk to us at our company who've been saved, who've been on a Lucas device for 40 or 50 minutes and come out neurologically intact. So I think it's only gonna keep growing. I think mechanical CPR is, is the way of the future, and I think we'll look back someday, 10 years from now, and say, God, remember when we used to do this manually all the time? And, and uh, I think the day will come where most CPR is being done that way. It's just, it's too difficult to do. Well, and, and I think back to uh, an anecdote mm -hmm. A.J. Heitman shared with us during the awards presentation earlier this evening, where he talked about one of the GEMS games participating right. teams, there was a CPR component in their exercise. Right. And one of the teams was unable to complete the exercise because they were physically unable to continue CPR. Right. The other teams did it, but this one, at least one team was unable to complete the, the exercise because they were unable to continue to do CPR for the time frame expected. Right. Uh, and that's a complete, it's a perfect example of why a mechanical device really is, in, maybe not for every system, but certainly for, for some systems in, in the immediate term, a great tool and resource for them to use. Right, right. So that's an example of, of one of the innovations we're working on. We talked earlier this year about ReadyLink, which was uh, and still is a, a, a basic life support tool, um, a life net appliance, so to speak, to really try and bring 12 lead out to uh, the rural areas and BLS responders. There was a lot of talk at Eagles about mm -hmm. BLS 12 lead, and that's just starting to take off now. There's, there's still not many people doing it, and it's early but we have a lot of faith in that one as well. And, and so we're, we're, we're doing these things, we're lining up innovations. Uh, one of the things I mentioned earlier is that the way physio control does innovation and, and develops technology, we, we're very science driven. Uh, we see ourselves as a science driven company. We have clinicians and we have PhDs, scientists in our company who don't develop products, they develop technologies. And for us, it's, it's not good enough to come out with an innovation that'll help sell a product. We want innovations that are gonna be clinically relevant and make a difference in the clinical world. And as I said earlier tonight, we may not always be the first one, 
but we believe we're going to come out with something that's superior. And that's, we'll take the extra time to do that. And you'll see some things coming from us over the next couple of years uh, that I think will, uh, will fall right in that category. You know, one of the things that strikes me whenever I talk to anybody that works at Physio Control uh, is that they really are keenly aware that their products save lives. Hmm. And they feel very connected. They feel like part of them is out there on the street with me, and with mm -hmm. other paramedics, in the hospitals with nurses and doctors, yep. saving people's lives. Uh, and, and it's neat to see that kind of personal connection uh, in a company with a product. Well, we, uh, we have a mission and a vision in our company. And our vision is a world where no one dies of a cardiorespiratory event, a sudden cardiorespiratory event, which is a very lofty goal, and we're never going to get that. But what we strive to do every single day all the way through the company is get us that much closer to the goal. The thing is that you know what needs to be done. Uh, you go to an Eagles meeting, how you get a city from a 5% survival rate to a 40% survival rate is known. Um, you read Mickey Eisenberg's book, yep. Dr. Mickey Eisenberg. Boy, does he challenge some people or what? <laughs> he does. He does. So that information is out there, and it's not any one thing. There's not that magic bullet, but there's a whole series of things that can be done through the whole chain of survival, through information and, and information management that can help improve survival rates. So that's information that's out there. Everybody at Physio Control knows what we do, and we, we have, a, at our company, we have a quarterly kickoff meeting. Uh, we'll have to invite you out to one of these times. I would love to come to one. And we, uh, we talk about how the company's doing. Our, our president gets a chance to speak to everybody. And we always bring uh, either a customer or a survivor to one of those. And we want to make sure that everybody in the company, is exactly like you said, is connected to what we do. This last time around, we had a survivor come in. And this was a father of two. We uh, recently won uh, a bid in Seattle schools to put AEDs in all the schools. And within three weeks of the deployment, we had this uh, pickup basketball game. Uh, these guys are you know, middle-aged guys playing basketball, probably out of shape, and the guy collapses, and they're doing, his friends are doing CPR. They, someone realized they'd just gotten an AED in the school, shocked him, saved his life, and he was up on stage uh, with his guys who wow. saved him, talking to everybody in the company, and there really wasn't a dry eye in the house. Wow. But it's really difficult to not get passionate about what we do as a company when you hear those stories, when you're connected to what our products do day in and day out. And that's why we do what we do. That's why it, almost everyone at Physio Control will tell you that's why they're at the company. Well, I want to thank you for, on my behalf, uh, on my listeners and viewers' behalf, for your support of what I do at Medicast, for helping me to get information out on innovations in patient care, and, uh, and for taking some time to sit down with me and, and tell me a little bit more about what, the, what is to come from Physio Control. I really appreciate it. No problem. Until next time. And I want to thank all of you for checking out this episode of Innovations in Patient Care. Again, you can find Innovations in Patient Care's audio program on iTunes, and you'll find this video and many other videos from the EMS 10 awards ceremony over on both Physio Control's uh, Facebook page, on their YouTube channel, and you can check it out on my channels at mediccast.com as well. Thanks again. I'm Jamie Davis from Innovations in Patient Care and the Mediccast here at EMS Today 2012 in Baltimore. Thank you.